That's not the only request. All right, so find your ribs if you can. Sometimes I find my back ribs by finding my front ribs, and I, and I go back, and there they are. There are the ribs. And then from the ribs, and I have you line that up with the end of your bolster, and then <clears throat> you put the ribs down, and then you kind of, um, it's like you're pinning the ribs to the bolster, but then taking the rest of your body forward. You know, you can take your, scoot your butt forward, take the flesh forward, take your hips forward, but try to keep the ribs pinned. And then you can come back to a um, ah, relaxed position. If you need something under your head, you can take your blanket and put it under your head. The birds are singing to us today. That's actually a song sparrow out there. You're going to get more just a yoga class today. You're going to get bird call, education, all sorts of stuff. Invite the heron to go there, but the heron is gonna appear in about an hour. It's gonna stand on that ledge out there and it's gonna watch us. Are you really? Are Probably. It's my prediction. <clears throat> it kept coming closer. So while you're here, you might um your dimensions versus the bolster will change what your arms do. So if you're a little bit uh, of a wider shouldered person, then it might be hard to let the arm bones fall off the sides, or which, I'm sorry, it would be easier to let the arm bones fall off the sides if you're a little bit narrower. Then think about um, turning your palms up to the sky, and then possibly this is up to you, but you would take your you would take your forearms, so you would take the forearms so they're perpendicular to the long edge of your mat, essentially, so your fingertips would point directly away from. So you would have um, forearms perpendicular, exactly. Yep, yeah, palms up, fingers pointing away, and that can help rotate the arms so the collarbone area starts to open up a bit. And you're going to be here a little bit, so commit to the idea that you will be here. And so if there's any fidgeting that you need to do, you absolutely need to move your body in some way or adjust hair or clothing, do it now. She'll be here a bit. And if you feel like with your arms in this position, if your fingers are super outstretched, uh, maybe relax them so they have a gentle curl. And then think about your feet and your toes and your ankles. And if you need to, you might even wag your legs in and out just to make sure that you're pretty loose in the whole leg, feet, ankle. Nice and jelly legs and then relax them. So if your breath is not coming to your focus yet, take it there. And when you inhale, let the chest and then the lower tips of the ribs that are touching the bolster, let those parts of your ribs inflate a lot so that middle band of breath <clears throat> in the back body gets bigger and wider. So when you inhale, let everything inflate, but feel that space where you hooked the bottom ribs into the bolster more. Uh, acutely than the other areas. And then on the exhales, focus on what the ribs do. Notice if you can feel a slight sort of retracting of the, uh, the abdominal area, but not, not in the front. We're thinking about the back of the abdominals, where the front of the spine lives. So when you exhale, try to feel, even if you just imagine that there's muscles and tissues that are gently 
pulling the spine in and back and up. So it's like lengthening your spine from the bottom to the top. You can stay in this spot here and just breathe and not move. But the next invitation is to lengthen the right leg so the right leg gets longer. So your heel is probably going to slide across your floor or mat, wherever your heel is. And as you do that, notice if the left hip tries to shorten. The idea is to make the right leg long without the left hip or leg shortening. So it might be a very tiny or non-existent movement. And you might find that you cannot isolate, which is fine. Just try to make the right leg long. Try not to use too many muscles. And if that feels kind of weird or just like how do you isolate, don't worry about it. We're going to switch to the left leg. Notice if you can isolate the left leg. Getting long without the right hip shortening, without you shortening the right side waistline, without you engaging the glutes. You make your left leg long without engaging the quadricep muscles too much. You might feel it in your belly though. And once you've explored that, you can alternate, so you can lengthen the right side. Again, this is fairly imperceptible movement, so it should feel like you're doing practically nothing. And then lengthen the left side, so just alternating. As you're focusing on one side, you might even have to focus more on the other side in terms of like not engaging stuff. You might put the lengthening side on autopilot and have to tell the other side to calm down or relax or not fire up. Explore that about five more times in your own way. Make sure that breath is still happening. You might even find that the exhale helps bring the leg back into place without much effort. So if you lengthen one side, whichever one you're at, take a breath in when it's lengthened. And then when you exhale, just kind of let the leg go back into place just by virtue of the spine lengthening a little. And then when you're ready, you're going to slowly scoot your butt further forward. So your the bolster's not making contact with your lower ribs now. It's actually making contact more with the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. So don't worry about being super exact. For women, it's pretty much where the bra strap area is. That's a good place. I'm not saying guys can't wear bras, but if you, if you don't know where that is, then sometimes what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll draw the shoulder blade down the back and I'll feel it go down and then I'll... Like, oh, that's the bottom tip. <coughs> And then from here, and you may or may not notice that as you go down a little further that your ribs pop out, mine do. And this could take minutes, days, years, but what we'd like to be able to do in this position is to eventually get the ribs to not pop up into, but not muscularly. This is, this is how we, we're trying to learn how to relax certain muscles here. So yeah, I could pull my ribs in muscularly, so on an exhale, I could use that um, that sort of elevator breath where we do, you know, pelvic floor, uh, front hips in, and then draw the ribs in like a corset. You could do that, but that's just one way to pull the ribs down. What we're trying to get you guys and me and lots of people to do is to have the ribs relax, um, relax down by virtue of releasing, in this case, maybe your psoas muscle. So you're going to be here about three minutes. 
And I'm going to sort of keep an eye on your rib cage and just see, does it get a little bit lower? It doesn't matter if it doesn't, mine still doesn't. So if you have overactive so as muscle, even the QL can sometimes do it here. Remember, however the breath comes into your body, I would be more concerned with how fully it leaves the body. Sometimes we, uh, we're in a rush to get to that next inhale, and I wouldn't be. The more fully you exhale, the better that inhale can uh, enter and assimilate itself. We'll take the last part of this and without inducing any stress response in the body, see if you can uh, count, inhale, exhale, and it's a five in, five out. So a count of five in and a count of five out. You can do a longer exhale, but not a longer inhale. If you're asking yourself, well, now what? You can keep breathing and counting. And you'll see how slowly we can start to gather the legs closer to the body. So the idea is uh, to not be too addicted to point A to point B, but to see if there's multiple different ways we can start to bring, like the foot closer to our torso. It might bend a little bit at first. That might you might come out to the side and then maybe you take multiple pit stops on the way to your feet being flat on the floor with the knees bent. You can even wiggle around things a little bit. And then, as you may be familiar, very picky about how we get up off of the floor, supine or prone. So once your feet do become flat, it's okay if you're still journeying to that point, but you would scoop the hips to probably your left, we'll say. Roll off to the right, and then let your head roll on the bolster. It's not going to pick up. Your head does not pick up. And use your top hand to press into the floor and just come up real slow. So you can even, sometimes I'll cover my eyes with my hands because I just don't want to really be too uh, stimulated in the eyes. And then you can stretch. Ah. We're going to be seated in different ways for about 10 minutes. So if cross-legged doesn't agree with you, you can always like change this a bit. I think the first thing we'll do though is um, I'll sit on a walk because that's what I gotta do. Ah. Alright, so we're gonna do a little work to loosen up the head, neck, and shoulders. And you know you're gonna get your butts kicked later, so <laughs> so enjoy the the slower work that we're doing. 
Um, oh, we got dog stuck in it. <laughs> okay. So you can change the crossing of your legs on my cue or anytime your knees or hips become uncomfortable. So we'll take the hands here or there about. And don't want you to get too, um, too worked up about where the hands are, right? Longer arms are going to be further out and so on and so forth. So <clears throat> looking over to the right and the left, I'm not trying to, and I'm keeping my chin pulled down a little bit, so I've got a little Jean Darabanda going here. And I'm not turning all the way. I don't want to go full range of motion right off the bat. But what I do want to do is see if I can get my shoulders to move with me. So when I look to the right, my uh, to the left, my right shoulder tends to pop forward, and that's okay. So let that sort of thing happen. And you might notice that with your hands affixed, there's only so much movement you can do. So what would happen if we moved, uh, next time you turn to the left, you moved your right hand over to the left, and then your left hand moves to a chair. You don't have a chair, but moves back to something. To the floor or to your bolster. And then you might notice that your hip wants to come along to the one you're not looking towards, and that's fine. And then keep moving the hands around. And you don't have to worry about where are my hands? Are they in the right spot? Just kind of move them to a place that feels okay. I like to transition on the inhale and then pause at the exhale. Um, I don't think there's any particular wrong way. And then you might even find that when you turn to the left next time, your right hand can go to your left shoulder. Now you have options. You know, you can just kind of leave it there. You could pull the shoulder towards you if you want to, or you could sort of needle it back a little bit. It's entirely up to you. When you do that, though, the opposite shoulder blade, you may notice, kind of pins on the back a little, and um, that's fine. Or if you want to, this is option three, you can needle it back, but then round the arm that you're using to push. That's a little bit different. It's just a different sensation. Normally, we're used to efforting and then pulling shoulder blades back. And in this case, we're efforting and sort of rotating it forward. Have you... Have you guys noticed that your range of motion has increased a little bit? Like, are you able to twist a little more now than you were at the beginning? Mm -hmm. Or are you still pretty sticky? Good. All right, so next time you turn, doesn't matter which way, we'll come to center. We'll get the legs out. And then just switch the crossing, if you can remember. Sometimes I can't remember mm -hmm. two seconds. What was I just doing? Where's the heron? It's actually flying across the... Oh, is it? Yeah. He'll it's... come back. Oh, yeah, let's see. He's having fun out there. Yeah, it's going to be for landing. <laughs> you see the trick, you throw like little stones in, and he sees the splash and thinks it's fish. Oh, okay. That's why I don't come over. <laughs> oh, oh, I gotcha. All right, well, maybe we'll try that later. Try to fool about it. <laughs> so I'm going to mirror you guys because I think I'm mentally up to the task. <laughs> it's not my favorite thing. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not mentally up to the task, I'll admit it right away. So we're going to turn to the right, and we'll take that left hand over to the right. And your, your right hand can do whatever it wants. I'll give you guys the option. And we're going to look over the left shoulder, which is pretty typical. And then we're going to take the left hand in and round the upper spine and look towards the right shoulder. So when you're open and you twist to the left, you look to the left, pretty pretty standard stuff. And then sort of spread the shoulder blades, spread your little herring wings across your back, look either over the right shoulder. I actually tend to look more towards my armpit because I don't like to lift my head like that. I'm just gonna do that about maybe 10 times. And again, we're not looking to crank and do like the ultimate range of motion, but 
And then when you go forward, see if you can sort of squeeze the chest muscles in a little bit. So not only are you opening the back of the body, but you're mindfully tensing a little bit the front body. Got all sorts of things like popping in my shoulder blade in a good way. You can lean forward a little bit, let your hips go with you too, so you don't have to keep those pinned. Like you're stuck in concrete, you can certainly be like you're in water. We'll do this. If you, if you are counting to 10, if you're taking that 10 literally, just keep going, that's fine. We'll come to center when you're done. And I just want to take the, the moment in between signs to assimilate what's going on. So for you, like the back of your left shoulder blade, how does that space feel, that whole area feel? And then the neck, in particular the, the left from stretching. And when you're ready, we'll, I like to take a little wave a little wavy gravy first before we do the other side. Sort of resetting the nervous system and then we'll start the other way. So you look to the left. And then again, we're, we're taking for, for you guys the right hand over to the left and we're keeping it there as we look under. But if you have to move the hand, move it. And I'm going to let you use your breath the way you want to. It's pretty intuitive to sort of exhale when you're curling, but I am not going to tell you that's it's wrong to inhale when you're curling. Mumu showing off for downward dog. She's like, what's the downward dog stuff, you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the next room. <laughs> So as you do this, you might find that the one inside your neck is a little tighter. Yeah. And we're going to unravel it, and then we're going to work it, and we're going to unravel it again. And then Paul said he was going to make the bacon first, so we'd have to smell it the whole time. <laughs> So if you need to do more on the side, do it, because that's that's the freedom of it's clicking things in my head. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. got one side of my neck. The fun part is the next part, though. It's all fun. <laughs> it's all fun. Oh. Looks like Paul's watching the video. <laughs> <laughs> so when you when you feel like you're done, you can again take the legs out and do a little uh, so we could get a little vibratory work in the body. If you want the electricity to flow in your body, which it is ideally it's doing constantly. I like the karate chop my yeah. Okay. All right, now we'll do the second set. The only thing that changes here is the direction that your head is turned. So as you turn to the right, you're going to look to your left. You might feel a little squeezing of the shoulder blades back, but don't like crank them. So a little bit of the shoulder blades. And then this is the part that messes me up all the time. And then when you go forward, you're looking to your left, underneath your left armpit. And then as you inhale, you're twisting your, you know, your torso in a spiral to your right, looking over your left. And then as you do the rounding shape, you look under your right. Oh, it's so weird. I don't get that mixed up. <laughs> I have to constantly remind myself. Look this way. Look this way. And this you might want to do more of just because neurologically it's hard to 
for some people, I'm not saying for you guys, but to put together. But ideally, the goal here is to repattern some of that, some of the neurotransmissions. To always look this way when I'm doing that. Always look that way. You know? I'm going to have those always impulses. The cool thing, anybody at home watching can do this and then decide they don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> or they've got to go to work or they've got to go make breakfast. Do about two more cycles, but do more, especially if you feel like, ah, oh, I'm just starting to feel some unraveling mentally, physically, both. When you do finish the side, come to center and sort of tune in, tune into the frequencies of what just happened. It's weird, I feel like I'm buzzing. For me, it's my left side. For you, if we were going up to your right, if you, we were feeling the same thing. Yeah, you can keep your legs crossed if if they have the the knees have the stamina or and cross them. So I'm just gonna go right to the other side with you guys. So turning to the left, looking to the right. See, ah, oh, so weird. And then looking under the left armpit as you twist your turn your chest and round it to the right. Left, look over right, and then right, look under left. This is the hardest one for me. Actually, the one you just did is the hardest one for me, but I'm mirroring you. Sometimes it's you want to do it fast at first because you're like, you want to get the motions down, but then once you get it, see if you can slow it. Because as you're rounding, you are you're rounding the, the upper back and you're squeezing the chest, but you're still turning your chest a little bit to your right as you look under the left armpit. And stay in one spot if you feel free. Feel free. about three or four more rounds. You give it to the side though, you could do ten more. Be fine. And when you do decide you're done, then come to that central position and just sort of take in the uh, the new way the the sparks are flying in your body, new messaging happening from your brain. In your spinal cord. One more exercise to open up the neck. Do you want to move to your feet or actually on the floor? Your feet are actually going to be on the floor for this one. You can grab your wrist if you want, like this. And Sort of, you can round, turtle shell, but then we're going to um, arch the back a little bit, kind of like cat cow. When you cat cow, and you exhale, you want that little hug and lift in the lowest part of your belly. And then next time you take your inhale, look up and find a spot on the ceiling or on the wood beams or wherever you are where your eyes like naturally go up and sort of lock into that spot like that's that's the spot that's right above my eyeballs right there because you're going to go back to that spot for comparison later soon all right found my spot okay and then from there i'll take the hands behind me i is to relax the shoulders so you don't have to be rigid and pressed into the floor. You could be like this if you wanted to. 
we'll do, again, I'm mirroring you, we'll do right leg first. So you're going to slide the right foot. You actually have to have your feet on the floor. I thought I said that, but if I didn't, I'm sorry. I was yeah, enough for not being clear. Um, yeah, small has moved. Yeah, yeah, so now, okay, now you got to find your spot again. <laughs> so find your spot and just stare at it for like 10 or 15 seconds or so because you do want to be able to go back and compare. Okay, when you feel like you have it, we'll come back. So for you, right leg. So the right foot's going to slide across the floor, but your foot's going to stay flat, so your leg is not straightened. And then from here, we're going to dorsiflex the foot and then make some monkey toes. Like you're gripping a pencil. I'm gonna try to take things off the floor. Is she too lazy to squat down? And then we'll take the foot back down, slide it into its original position, and then we'll just lift and spread the toes, pressing with the big toe, little toe mound. Good. And that's it. So you just slide it, keep your foot flat, and then when you lift your foot for dorsiflexion, don't slide the foot anymore. Yeah, keep it right there. And then monkey toes. Pick up the pencil toes and then come back in and just lift and spread. So we're going to do that at your own pace. Keep breathing. Make sure the breath is happening. And do that a few times here. And then grip. And then come down. And then lift and spread. Good. And this is a good, now that you have it down, and I'll do it with you so you always have the visual. Um, what you don't want to do is one, you don't want to pause the breath. And you want to go at your own pace, so if you know what's going on, you can go at your own pace. And then one of the reasons that we're here is to check in with like different sensations. So see what your knee does as you're moving your feet, like muscles around the knee, do you feel anything happening around the knee as the foot moves and the toes do different things? Maybe three more of these. Dorsal flex the foot, curl the toes, take the foot down, slide it in, nips and spread. Good. Do this a couple more times on your own. Yeah. Feet. What the feet are doing? Good. So when you're done, just want to make sure people can check this out. And of course, you've got to stay in your spot. So when you come back to your spot, come to this position and look up and just see if your spot's moved in any way. Stay the same. Does it, did it move back? Did it move forward? Feel free to verbalize that. Seems like you move back a little. Did it move back that way a little bit? What about you? Is your spot the same? My eyes are moving. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I'm not trouble to just. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Can't explain it till like, I give a stare. All right, when you're ready, we'll do the other side then. I'm going to move back for visuals. So now it's your left. So slide it out. Dorsiflex, pencil toes, move the back, and then just lift and spread the toes. So the goal is to do about 10 of these on each side, so if you want to count, you can. You have the ability to know what's going on. And you can't really mess it up, so if you. Do the wrong thing, it's not like it. It's like it's like a painting, you can always fix a painting. Hmm. Make sure your breath is still moving and have a good sense of if there's anything um, anything going on in the body that you don't need. Like Jaws clenching, something like that. Let's do 
You can finish up to ten, so three or more if you need to. Ruby, now check your spot, see if it moved. If it didn't move, it's fine. If it didn't move, that's fine too. Yeah, you look taller. Did it move back more? Seems the same. Yeah. So, that's probably the right side of your neck that's tighter. That, that work actually all works to lengthen the whole back side of your body up to your neck. Okay, so now, now that you're all loosened up in the upper body, well, time to get up. Time to get up. Stand up. No, no. We're just going to come to uh, kneeling and have the blocks handy in the front of your mat. You guys didn't take your straps? No. There you go. <laughs> I, I made you dive for it. I know, I hit the well, side you of the block. Thing. <laughs> he pulled back a little, a little. little. <laughs> All right, it's true. You're gonna take the strap, Ten. Take it around the no, thighs. Sorry. No, do not leave this room. <laughs> Take it around your thighs and just nice and tight. You want to have a little bit of space though, so you don't want to have your legs squished together. So if you wish, you can take one of your blocks in between. That can be your spacer. These blocks are pretty thick though, so it might not work so well. Just leave a little space. Yeah, just make it tight enough so you have so you're you know you're about hip width here there's some space here and then just keep it you know tight for that area so good it's a little twisted I'm not gonna like that but I do that you probably do <laughs> mine was perfect <laughs> yeah. oh okay so oh, yeah, I can see it. yeah. <laughs> And I will use the block example and it will be good. So what I'm trying to do with the block is what you're trying to do with the strap, just different things. So you can have your feet flat. This is going to be a little more challenging in some ways. You can have your toes curl. I'm going to start with toes curl. All right. So what I'm trying to do is drop the block without moving my knees. And so what you're doing is you're going to press into the strap. So like you're trying to break the strap. And we're just going to do some inhale and exhale. So you're familiar with the arm movements. We're trying to get out of the linear movement. If you want linear movement, there's thousands of classes you can go to for that. So here we go. Inhale and then exhale. And then as you work to drop the block slash brace into your um, strap a little bit, we're going to start to move back. We're going to move back on the exhale. So you're going to make fists now instead. And then as you exhale, feel the elevator and then draw back. So you're going to try to drop the block, but you're going to have to squeeze the glutes a little because our hips are open. So the idea is can you brace the strap slash drop the block and have the glutes still squeeze. You might even think about spinning your imaginary block behind you so the leg bones rotate in. That's just a... A third way of thinking of it. I like threes. I like things in threes. Good. So you feel you can 
sort of brace against the strap and still squeeze the glutes. My knee's kind of talking to me, so I actually have to do that for my knee not to talk to me. Inhale. We're going to go back a little bit more. And then next time you go back, see if you can hold without gripping. So you can just be like, doo, 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 doo. really relaxed up here, really fired up here. Breaking the strap apart. And then we'll come forward, take your blocks, and we'll do prayer puppy pose to honor Moo and Moxie who are being left out. And if your elbows are on your blocks and you have the mobility, which you might from all that opening that we did, <clears throat> press your elbows, press your outer forearms into the blocks, and then start to bend the arms slowly. Even if you know you can do this, bend them slowly because there might be a spot there that has a little extra sensation or juice in it. It's good. good. And then keep pressing in because we want the armpits to sort of hollow back. We don't want them to splay out. So if you press the elbows into the blocks, and as you breathe, find like a baby cat-cow motion in the spine. So as you exhale, there's this lifting and there's a support from the front of the body. It's kind of like a bridge. The support comes from underneath the bridge, not on top. And then next time you can, exhale, use the cat belly pose to come up to forearm. If you can use the blocks, that's great. We're going to take the knees back. You can keep the hands pressed, like actively press. If you actively press, it'll help to hug in the armpits. So you can straighten one leg and then the other. And the idea here is to keep the unicorn horn on the crown of your head pointing straight ahead. So if it starts to point down towards your fingers, you're going to start injuring yourself. So keep that pointing horn forward. And then if you want both to come up, remember the support comes from the front of your body, which is the underside of your bridge. Think of your body as a bridge. You want to support it from underneath. You might even draw the pelvic floor up so the tailbone Draws towards the heels a bit. If you want to round the upper spine, you can, but there's also a flatter spine version, so you can go like a little cat cow in the upper spine only. See if you can do this without pointing your unicorn horn down. And then when you're ready, come up, take your knees down, come back to your puppy position. If there's a wiggle or a Side to side motion, you want to take, you can. Keep the breath flowing. And think about earlier, we were lying on our backs, we had the <clears throat> ribs on the bolster. So pretend here that you, instead of the ribs hanging out on the inhale, that they sort of splay um, side to side instead of just jutting forward. So make the breath go wide. And make the exhale. Draw deep and back. The next time you exhale, use that to come forward to another forearm plank bit. And then you can lift up on the exhale. Rounding the upper spine is an option. You can always take a more extended spine. And then your choice, you can take your knees down or you can take your left hand on the outside of your block and your right hand and then walk your hands back. Bend your knees generously. Drag it off the back of your mat. Generous bending of the knees so your thighs act like a little shelf for your torso. Feet can be wider than normal. And sway a little bit side to side. And if you can, take your right hand down right under your chest on the floor or on a block. And then left hand is going to do this. Left fingers are going to touch your wrist and it's going to draw a line up your arm and you're going to bend the right knee and turn to your left. So away from the beautiful scenery. Don't worry. I saved the scenery for last purpose. And the left leg is going to straighten naturally, but don't like push the back of your kneecap. Press your heel into the ground and then feel like you're bracing against that strap. Good. Take the hands down. It's okay if you're not wearing the strap because you can still brace against an imaginary object. Okay, take both hands down. 
Take your left hand under your chest. Right fingertips, draw a line up your whole arm through the chest, and then you bend the left leg, right leg. Rather than straightening the right leg, just think about rounding the right heel into the floor more strongly, and then you can brace against strap wheel or imaginary. Good. Notice if your arm bone is poking in your face, and then take your right arm down again. We're going to reconstitute the pose. So let, as your hand comes to your chest, let your arm bone, your right arm bone, reach back and then reach the arm up. So there's no distinguishing between, see how this is poking out here? Do you see what I'm saying? Oh. Take, the, take it down. Take it down. <laughs> Come up and then try to, see, see where your hand is? Mm -hmm. Take it to your chest and then again, you, do you see the difference? Yeah. Does that, does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah, okay, right. cool. I think you were fine here, but I'll check you out if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that, looks, that looks a lot better. If it feels better, that's what's most important. Let's take it down, hands down. We'll take our feet as wide as the mat. My feet are going to go off the mat. No, I'm going to go rogue. Go. Turn your toes out comfortably, so when you bend your knees, toes and knees are in the same direction. And then when you're ready, come up to chair. You can always have your hands on your... Because it's just this off. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> you can fight against it. <laughs> Good. And then from this chair pose, you can have your hands on your hips or forward like you're holding a box. And then pretend like there's a block there and squeeze the block, but your hands don't touch. You're just squeezing it. So there's a little bit of hugging in. And then as you inhale, drop the tail. But then exhale, lift from the lowest part of your belly, and then lift your right heel. Inhale, take it down, lift your left heel. Notice when your heels lift, if like this starts to happen, so you want to isolate it in the belly in one or both heels. So if your hips rise too, I'm not asking you to be like a boat, but if you want to be, you can. It's more like, that's why we use a lot of here. A lot of inner thigh. Press into the big toe mounds a little more. Yeah, good. Let's do two more. Good. Nice, we'll come down, we'll fold. We'll walk the hands out. Feel free to do a elevated dog, hands on blocks. Blocks are straight now, not curled in. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Get your, get your ticket ready, we're going for a ride. From here, feet are going to be as wide as the mat, but keep them on your mat, so don't go rogue for this one. Inhale, bend into both knees, take your tail high, high towards the, the air mattresses back there. And then let the elbows bend down, but you're hugging in. So if the blocks could slide together, they would. And as you breathe here, let your belly fill. Exhale, draw the belly in, come up to your tippy toes, hug the ribs back, come to mountain dog. We're in wide mountain. So your sacrum is the tip of the mountain, and then inhale, really it's more like the tailbone. And then exhale, roll it in, right up, mountain dog. We're going to repeat. Inhale, bend, exhale. Remember the front of your body supporting the back. So good, repeat, keep going, your pace, your pace, three more. Bend, hug, lift. Brace against the imaginary strap, maybe on your last one. See what that feels like. And then round the upper spine, tuck your chin in towards your chest if that helps, and come forward to plank. Good. Draw the belly in strong legs. Sandy, strong legs. Yes. And then take the knees down together. So you make a fishtail with your shins. And then take the blocks back to you. Sit. Fishtail doesn't work with your knees, just take your knees wide. Let me get to be here for a second. So. Uh -oh. Looks like Ken came back. <sighs> or something. Good. So from here, we're going to come back. I'm going to move my mat out just a little bit because I'm going to need some room. 
So you are too, so I guess this is a good everybody. Oh, cool. Sorry, somebody gave me a nice compliment. <laughs> She's another yoga instructor. So. Oh, is this live? <laughs> You're great, go go. You're great. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so from here we do the elevated dog. You don't have to use the block. You can totally say no. But so we're gonna use the mountain dog. You're welcome to watch if you want. You don't have to. But the idea is to bend into the joint spaces, hug the elbows in, and then as you exhale, find your mountain dog, but take your right knee up, and then fire hydrant your dog. You're a male dog now. And then kick the knee back, and then press your heel towards your buttock like you're kicking yourself in your own butt. Good, good. And then take a breath here, and as you exhale, dive down like a little nose dive. Bend everything, and then take your right knee to your left uh, elbow or shoulder, and then stretch the leg out, and then slide. Bend your arms. Exhale up, kick back. Make a circle with your leg. And then kick your own butt again. Inhale. <laughs> Good. Exhale. Dive it down. Right knee, left shoulder or elbow. Slide. And then exhale. Hug your belly and scissor the legs. Kick the leg back. Make a circle. Kick your own butt. Inhale. And then exhale. Dive down. Hug it in. Hug it in. Yep. Twist it over. You guys got it. Good. It's always good when the students are a step ahead. It means... They get it, and then one more on the leg circle. Kick back. Exhale, dive it in, twist it over. And then from here, take the leg out, lift the left arm. Maybe come to a fallen triangle. So you're either in side plank with your leg out. Press into your index knuckle on that block or floor. And then you're going to sit now. So sit your bum down. You're facing in a totally non-traditional way. So let go of your OCD tendencies, and then reach forward. And we'll go side to side here. Let your elbows point out, fingers in, touching any part of your leg that you can. And I'm walking my hands up my leg as I go, and then walking them down. Because I'm just walking, finding different extensions of your arm. We'll get into different parts of your back. Good. Now, take your right hand back to your block or to the spot it was before. I'm actually going to take my block out for this. The blocks make this both easier and harder, depending on your own weaknesses. Now, from here, you can have your legs bent, by the way. Just like we did when we were on our knees and we were leaning back. Think about that when we were leaning back and we had to brace against the strap and yet utilize the glutes as we started to lean back. Same idea. So inhale, hand goes to your belly button. And then as you exhale, draw the belly in, and brace against the strap, but also use the glutes to lift. You can have your legs bent, remember, for this. You guys are both pretty strong. And inhale, reach forward with the left arm. Right arm just reaches up. And then exhale, reach back. Brace and loops. Inhale at the top. Exhale, come forward, get a stretch. And we'll do this one more time. Inhale, exhale. Good, you guys. Turn it around. And then hug the right knee into the armpit. Make a mountain dog with your right knee. It's like touching your armpit or reaching for it or hoping for the best. And then swing your right foot forward, replacing your pinky finger. That was a little. Sorry. <laughs> that was a little. Well, we, we knew that that happened was for a sure. Line. So we're going to yeah. come to. Um, we're going to turn to Prasarta Paritanasana. So turn to your left or fan pose. Get a little symmetry in the body. Feel free to ninja lunge your way around. And in fact, with the legs bent about 20 30%, you can even do a little circling of the hips. A little circling of the hips. It's good. It's important. They need to move. And then from here. Wherever you want, you can just hang down. Let the spine get some traction. If you want to take the blocks in that um, V shape for your forearms, you can, that we did earlier with the forearm plank. Or you can, yeah, where you can just hang, grab opposite elbows. And then put a little bit more weight to the front of your feet if you're um, leaning back. 
If you're leaning back, see what it's like to put more weight in the front. Good. And then check in with your feet. <clears throat> One option here. We're going to pick on the right foot. So <clears throat> without locking the legs so the pelvis can move freely, little bend in the knees would be very helpful. And then turn the right toes towards the front of your mat. They don't have to go all the way, just turn them as much as they'll go. And then lift the foot so your heel's in the floor, dorsiflexion, like we did earlier in that exercise. So yeah. And then monkey toes. <clears throat> and then take the foot down. And now lift up your heel like tippy toe work. Good. Take it down flat, relax, maybe bend the knees a little bit, wave the head, and then repeat. So dorsiflex, everything but the heel, grip the pencil, foot down, and then put on the two-inch heel. I don't think you can get four inches. <laughs> Good. And then we'll repeat that a couple times. Can you just notice how the muscles in the back of your leg are reacting to different foot work? Just pay attention to that. Please. Maybe you're feeling something else. That's fine too. And then find the position that you like best with your foot and keep it there. And you're going to turn everything to the front for pyramid pose. So if you like the tippy toe, then you might lift the heel up. As you switch positions, you might find that, oh no, I need to do a different position. That's not going to work. This is what I like to do because I'm lazy. So there you go. Your choice. You can use the block or not. Are you getting a cramp in your calf? What's the way to just straight up here too? Yeah, just not to here, it's just so just yeah. Straight. So do a little bit of resist release, a little bend, a little stretch. Everybody could could benefit from a bit of that. And then if you want to, so front knee, you really want to make sure it's not locked out, hyperextendedness. We all I think have a little tendency towards that in this room. So as you inhale, press your heel, press the back foot, bend the front leg, exhale, start to roll the spine up slowly, let the head and the shoulders come up last, and then as you inhale, you could reach the arms up. You totally don't have to. Good. And then you can just relax at the beach, like, oh, I've got the block supporting you. If you've got the block under your shin, that's a really nice action when you press the calf into the block, you guys. Don't have that, it's okay, you don't have to, but... I couldn't get to stay. Oh, you couldn't? Yeah. And yeah. Not sure. Yeah, you're going to have to play with the uh, the height and the angle. Yeah, I think my leg's too short. <laughs> you know? That's all right. Well, maybe we'll try it later. Okay. Turn the block side. Taking down. Yeah. Taking down. Yeah, you could. Yeah. You could. Fantastic. Back knee down. Let's twist. Simple twist to the right. Let the whole... Let this leg rotate out, if you can. And then like we did earlier, come in. You can thread the needle a little bit with the arm or not. Let the hips sway out if they want to. And then come out. And you're keeping your arm around, like you're hugging a panda bear. You want to keep the panda bear in your arms. <laughs> He would never want to be a panda book dragon right? because he considers them pretty stupid. Because they keep eating bamboo, which is not even good for them, so they're like making themselves extinct. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Are they technically not bears either? Um, no, they are. They are. I'm going to sneeze, so when I do, I'll just, out. just we, enjoy we it. We have to do it also. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> we have to get some. Thank you. All right, so the we'll, last thing we'll do here, take the hands, frame the front foot. You can use the blocks if you want. They'd be off of the mat. So inhale, press, exhale, draw the belly up. Come to that pyramid, sort of, but the front leg is still bent. So it's like a lunge. Lift the back leg without much momentum if you can. Take the leg in. We're not going to hold it up yet. Inhale for chair. And then exhale, fold. We're going to repeat that twisty sequence we did in the beginning. So right hand down under your chest. And bend the right leg. 
Left arm traces a line up inner arm across chest and try to get your shoulder, if it doesn't do it, don't force it, but try to get the arm bone, the upper arm bone, to stack a little bit better before you extend the arm. If it doesn't stack, then guess what? You have to lift your arm out in the direction that the arm bone wants to go. Yeah. And again, it, how it looks, one thing, make sure it feels good, and then switch. So take your left hand down on floor or block underneath the sternum. Right hand traces a line up the inner arm across, and then make sure that the arm bone has a place before you wag your arm out. But see, once the arm's already extended, yeah. that was good that you were no. thinking of it. But see, this arm here, I'm gonna show you something. Take, you're taking the arm, try to do this, try to keep your wing out. Can you keep the wing like out? I'll show you, go ahead and do the thing. Wing, this way. Yeah, oh. do you feel how that changes? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and then you don't even have to extend the arm. So again, it's up to you how it feels. Good, take it down. Blocks are an option, step or jump back. If you jump, land softly. Land softly. Like a ninja. Good, take the blocks out. Bend into your limbs, down dog, exhale. Wave it up through, find your plank. Take your knees down, inhale. And then as you exhale, come down, diagonal, chaturanga. Take the fingertips out on the sides so they line up with your shoulders. If fingertips don't work because you've got super bendy fingers, just take your ridge tops or whatever feels good. All right, inhale, press fingertips and tops of toenails. Exhale, let the belly rise. Remember, you're a bridge, so let the belly rise. Corset the ribs back. Inhale, curl the heart on head. Exhale, down and up. Your exhale goes down and up. Your inhale finishes. You guys are usually familiar with this, but... So you're really getting super tucked in in the, the bandhas, low belly. Support your bridge before you come up. And then next time you come up, right, exhale. Then you can do a little, if you want to reach forward and pretend like you're swimming, that works too. But when you're ready, we'll take the hands back. Thumbs into the outer legs, palms up. Lift your right shoulder and right chest to the sky. And then left. See if you can just isolate the upper body at first and then start moving the lower body with it. You might even find that you sort of go to one side. Good. When you're ready, hands down by mid ribs. You can have your hands wide if that helps you keep your elbows in, so explore that option. Take a breath or two, wiggle, wiggle things. In fact, let's bend the legs, windshield wipers, real quick. Shins go side to side. All right, legs down, tops of your feet are pressed like I'm stepping on them. And then exhale, pull the belly, come to cat pose. Inhale, find the cow, move. Curl your toes, exhale, dog. From the dog, take your feet as wide as the mat. Hands pressed, good. Bending into the knees, let the tail go high. As you exhale, lift belly, walk hands back. Semi-wide ragdoll. And if there's Toes out, if you want your feet totally off the mat, that's a valid option. Toes out, knees go in the direction of the toes. If your toes are too wide for your knees, move the feet, move the toes, don't force the knees. Inhale, chair. This time we're gonna go into the hip hop dancer. So similar to what we did earlier, you're gonna take the right shoulder in, spin, if you spin the right fingers in towards the inner groin area, it's a lot easier. Take your shoulder and your elbow down. Look under the left. Breathe and pause. Make sure you're dropping the tail and the exhale. Curl the belly round and then switch sides. Exactly. Good. Inhale. I mean, this is familiar stuff, but good. Oh, there's a little hip hop. 
That is hip hop. Hip hop. <laughs> hip -hop. Uh, I'm terrible at puns. Okay. Do this a few times. Use the exhale to transition. Get a little extra core work. It's almost like a little bit of nowly work. It's warm in here. You guys warmed it up. Yeah. Did a good job. Sun, I think. <laughs> when you're ready, inhale, chair, hold your box, your imaginary box. But now, <clears throat> let's take the arms in. We'll do what we did earlier on the bolster and thumbs back like hitchhiker. And then as you exhale, you can lift, or you could just stay here. You can stay here, lift, or hug and lift. So there's a sense that your arms are touching, literally touching and squeezing your ribs. And you can lift your hips if you want to. And the next time you come in, try to take your hands back, down, walk your hands up, feet together. All right, the left leg is going to be the leg of feature here. So as you inhale, bend into all limbs, elbows back and in. Exhale, draw the belly, take the left knee up to fire hydrant. So take the shin up and then make a circle or two if your left hip feels sticky. But then we're going to take the leg back and kick your own butt with your left heel. Yeah, good. Breathe, press down. Then exhale, dive, long down, dive it all down, and then left knee, right elbow, switch it out, and then, oh, don't lift, don't lift that right hand yet. I thought I had it. Come down, bend your arms, exhale, lift, kick, inhale, kick your own butt, and then exhale, dive it in, left knee over to the right, keep both hands down, maybe a little push-up position with the arms. Good, exhale, scissor the legs, you guys got it. Kick your butt, inhale, exhale, dive down, lift through the front of your belly, make sure your belly is higher than your chest. We'll do this two more times to make five. Good. And then the next time we come down, we will lift the right arm up if you choose. You can have your hip, yeah, good. So it's like side plank. Open a jar of pickles with your left hand. So rotate it out a little bit. Good. Let's take the bum down. Now you're facing beautiful outside. Look for the heron. And then stretch forward. This time let's just stay still. If you want to take a little movement side to side, you can. Otherwise, elbows on blocks or floor. We'll be here about three minutes. Almost like a rest, almost similar. Good if you want to move your torso. So it's going over your left leg and then going over your right leg. Those are certain options you can take. No, no. <laughs> you should keep and try. All right, so we'll do that sequence we did earlier. So the left hand is placed in a good spot behind you where it might be placed for a plank position. Don't let the shoulder hike up into the earlobe. Make sure you're pressing away from the floor. Find your jar of pickles and open it. So you want your left hand further back. And again, like, no, like this way, down the mat. No, on the, this side of the mat, like probably about here. Yeah, probably about here-ish with your fingers facing forward. Perfect. Good. All right, so here we go. Right hand down by the bed. Remember, you can bend your legs for this. Brace your imaginary strap as you exhale and you lift. And then inhale, reach back. And then as you exhale, come down, reach your right arm forward, left arm back. Take a breath. 
And then exhale, same thing. So feel the belly rise and lift. Good. Inhale, the top. Exhale, come forward. Inhale, pause. And just repeat that three more times. Yeah, exhale on the efforting part. Inhale at the top and pause. And then come forward and stretch. Yeah, stretch towards the middle. And then exhale, reach. Good. Nice. Yeah, we'll do this one more time. Next time you come up to the, the hip opener, let the glutes lift you. Switch your hand over, tuck your left knee into your armpit. Get really high, so support yourself with the muscles in the front of the body. And then swing your left foot forward, replace your left hand. That was more delicate for sure. And then, hold on, let me get my steps. Good, we're gonna walk it over to the right. And this time, bring your straps with you for reals. Uh, not your straps, your uh, blocks, yeah. Two totally different objects. And then your forearms are gonna go down, even if you can touch the floor. Just put them down on your V-shaped blocks. Press your hands in like we did for the forearm plank. And then <clears throat> as you inhale, let the sit bones widen apart. Let the knees bend. And as your hip creases get deeper, don't relax on your hip creases. Try to press into your, your inner feet. Draw your belly up. Come up to your tippy toes. We're going to do this a couple times. Inhale. Bend, but press. Press your arms. Press your feet. And then exhale. Rise and lift. So if you, yeah, but if you hug the pelvic floor, a little belly up and in, the tailbone should rise for you. If you're feeling a little saucy today, you could lift and then take your right foot to the middle of your mat. And then take it back up. But it should, it should be a somewhat graceful endeavor. <laughs> or maybe it shouldn't be. What the heck do I know? I don't know. But maybe if you can lift it up. You might have to bend the leg in order to get it to move. My leg's kind of straight. You might have to bend the leg. Good. This is just for, for fun. Okay. So turn your left toes towards the front of your mat. You don't have to go all the way forward. Let your right toes point relatively like forward-ish. And then we're going to do that foot exercise we did. We're going to dorsiflex left foot. We're going to grip the pencil and then take the foot down and wear your, your heels to be toe. Yeah. So this is with your left foot. Sandra, you turned. I kind of turned one. The other way. Yeah, turn the other way. I was like, I gotta do so much. Go ahead. Just turn around so you don't get confused because turn all the way. All the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Good. The window. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good, now turn your left toes towards the, uh, yeah, perfect. All right, so yeah, we'll do the dorsal flexion. And again, you don't want to have your legs locked out here because you want some movement in the hips and knees. Grip down and plantar flex or tippy toe. Do this until your heart's content. Check out what your hamstrings, so the muscles in the backs of your thighs are saying to you as you do this. If the sensation is going to the backs of the knees, I would consider turning the toes more inward towards the heron that's out there eating some fish. Let's talk to the rock. He's out there, man. He was there for the longest time in the rock. <laughs> Look at the island. And then when you're ready, keep the foot position you like best. Remember, you can always change, you're not married to it. And then walk to the front of the mat so you come to a pyramid pose. You can either change the foot position, you can keep it. And if you didn't get a chance to really use the blocks last time, like, you might really just have to play around with the, the angle. Yeah, and you can, which you, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Everyone's gonna need something different. And then when you're ready, you don't just sort of pop up like a, like a whack-a-mole, you want to bend, and then as you exhale, there's this drawing in, the slow rise, and I'm furling. And then maybe your hands stay at your hips, because stability could be a thing here. Mm -hmm. Or you could take the, the knife. You're at the beach, almost literally at the beach here. 
Good. Yeah, and then if you press your calf into the supportive spot, just notice what that does. Woo, it makes me fall over. But it makes my hamstrings engage. It stabilizes my knees. Like over here. Yeah, good. Good, yeah. So if it can help stabilize your knee, which is totally an awesome thing for most of us. It sure is for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and that's the left knee, that's too. The, yeah, exactly. Good. All right, so we'll take it down. We'll unravel, and then from here, a nice twist, easy twist. Feel free to take this leg and let it come off the midline a little, and then rotate it out. So instead of the foot just going like this, think of the leg from where it connects to the hip bone, slowly going out, and everything follows it. And then we have the panda. If you don't want a panda, you can certainly put another cute creature in here, but I'm just thinking of hugging a panda. And then you can thread the needle through. You can let the hips move too. Like, don't be afraid to let the hips move. They don't have to be fixed in space. Good. You can bend the support arm, especially when you come to the, the more open expression of the pose. And I even bend it when I come down. When you're ready, blocks can come forward. We're going to try to use the strength of our core here. Little pyramid pose, and then as you exhale, there's this big support in the front of the right abdominal area, and then stepping forward to chair. Brief chair pose, and then exhale, stand. And then look it out. We put it up to 76 in here. It's not bad. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> okay, so we're we feeling pretty stable in the legs. Okay, so we're gonna get more work. All right, so so we'll go with the premise that if you if you're in a position, I'll just show this, if you're in a position and you pretend like you have something behind your calf and you squeeze it in, that there's a stabilizing effect in the knee most of the time, right? So if you think about that, then what I'll do is I'll cue pressure calf into the wall, pressure calf. So it's like you're sliding your heel towards the back of your mat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we'll work with today. All right, blocks on the corners. I'm actually going to do this facing this way, um, so I don't have to worry about mirroring you. All right, so we did that fire hydrant earlier. We're going to bend into the hips more than the knees at this point. Right hand on the block at any level. You have three levels. You have two blocks. You have all sorts of things. You have the floor. <clears throat> Similar to what we did earlier, left arm reaches up. The right leg stays bent. Left foot presses into the floor. So really press the left foot into the floor so you feel the left hip uh, go lower than the right. Let's do that a few times. Thread the needle. You're going to switch which leg is bent, by the way, when you thread the needle. Take your panda and then reach up and you're going to bend the right leg. So when you hug the panda close, your left leg is bent. When you release the panda, because if you love something, you let it go, right? And then you bend the right leg. So, a couple times. So notice that I said to press the other foot into the floor. I didn't say to straighten the leg. I'm not saying that straightening the leg won't happen, but think about pressing the heel. Good. Next time you hug the panda close, bend both knees so they're equally bent. And then as you exhale and you release the pan into the wild, lift the left leg up like fire hydrant. Breathe at the top here, relax the shoulders. And then exhale, take it down, but don't put your left foot down, but hug the pan to close. Whoa. <laughs> Inhale and pause. Exhale, using the belly muscles, release the panda, fire hydrant, and then taking it in. Notice that your right leg should stay pretty well bent. And the next time you release the panda, your choice, you could start to straighten the leg towards those mattresses behind you, keeping the right leg bent at least a little. 
And if you like, you could slowly use an exhale to curl the belly, curl the chest a little, right hand releases, and maybe it offers something towards the cove. Oh my God. You don't have to do this, you can be here. Right? Yeah. And then just take it forward. Stand like a flamingo. Take the left foot down because the right leg wants to stretch. I think it does. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's good. So we'll take either eagle or traditional mini skirt cross. My main offering here though is going to be the figure four cross. So if knees and hips are okay with this, and you have the blocks there, if you want, you can support. You can take the hands to your heart and be very pious, pious pigeon. And of course you can go down. You can always go down. Good. More important here that your lower leg is in a chair position. If you do feel the, the desire to press the left foot through the floor so it can go down through the deck and into the ground, you can do that. But just remember, you're not straightening the leg, you're grounding. Mm -hmm. Think about grounding more. Otherwise, the back of the knee just goes psh, And then you can straighten. There's an arm balance here. Peter, you can take it if you want. Mm -hmm. If your leg does it on the side, I don't know. Yeah. If you want to do the arm balance, um, you can take the blocks forward. You can just come forward. That's good. How's that feel? Like, Okay, around here? Right. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel fine. What if you make this like you're wearing a pair of high heels? No, high heels not bad. <laughs> yeah, like that. There we go. Good. What happens if you take this hip back a little? It doesn't have to go back if it hurts, but if it went back. It doesn't hurt. Okay. And then bend this knee a little bit. Hmm. Good. Okie dokie. We'll come out. So the best way to come out is just unravel. Take it down. And then let's do this. Let's do the... Um, with both hands on the floor, we'll just do, since this has been a theme today, and if there's anything you really need to do, like the right leg needs to shake, or you need to like move, or shake your head, yes or no, that works too. When you're ready, you'll bend the knees generously, and then from the front of your body, take a nice roll up. Keep your legs bent, and you can stretch. Surprise, my hair is held up this long. <laughs> It's not really holding up, but it's staying in. So if you would like, sometimes it feels nice to, you know, just open here, but what I like to do is use the strap bracing technology. And I even turn my heels out a little bit. This is what works for my body. And then I'll take the back bend from a sense of bracing against the strap, and then it doesn't sit here in the low back. And my legs aren't locked either, by the way. Yeah. You don't have to do that, but it might feel good. And taking this position here. And when you're ready though, you're gonna come down and we're gonna set up for that second side. Good. Okay, so chair pose. Left hand is supported in the way that suits you best. <clears throat> so as we open the chest towards Goose Cove, hello Goose Cove, the left leg bends, right foot presses. So panda, released, and then bend the right leg and hug it close. You can let the head do what it wants here, like if on the first side your head was really alert and sort of military neck, you can relax it here. I'm having trouble with balance on this side. Try to keep that arm around, Sammy, so the elbow leads the way. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, we're not supposed to straighten it out. No. Just keep it around the whole time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. No. You're doing it on the other side. So, oh. Yeah. Huh. Side you know are different. Side thing. Yeah, I do. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm experiencing it right now, actually. So next time you hug the panda close, pause there for a moment, and then bend both legs so they're equally chair-like. And then you can release, open up towards the cove. And then taking the right knee up, you can fire hydrant that. And then as you hug the panda back in, take the knee and you can put your foot down if you need to. And then fingers towards 
the living room. Good. Keeping that left knee bent. The leg starts to straighten. You really want to try to keep it bent, even if that right foot has to come down. Good. That way your hips can move around your leg. All right, ready to take it up. So you can pause in the fire hydrant, keep the left leg relatively bent, keep the belly drawn, kick the right heel back towards your mattresses. Well, they're technically mine, but for yours for the sake of queuing. <coughs> Strong press into the left heel. And in fact, smoosh that left calf muscle into your imaginary wall. And as you exhale, lift the left arm. There's a lot of core work here. And then from there, you want to take the foot down. And then left leg. You've got your mini skirt, you've got your eagle, and you've got your... So if you can do this, do it, because you both did it on the other side. If it doesn't work for your left knee or whatever, modify. Good. And as we did before, think more of a chair pose than of a pigeon. What happens when you, uh, when you high heel your foot? You know, when you like, your foot's like all, all sorts of things. I know. If that, if that stabilizes, you can do that, but see what happens when you do that. So the difference between... Yeah, this is my proverbial uh, protective thing, right? This yeah. So what can you do with that foot? Do you want to... It does stuff on the top. It strikes me. It really does, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> sometimes. What if you were holding on to something so you didn't have to worry about balance? You know? Right, that's good point. Like use something. Oh gosh, I smell bacon, guys. <laughs> it's not a matter. <laughs> I don't like bacon. No? I don't like it. I like the smell of it. Yeah. I don't really like it, so it's... Yeah. It's one thing. So you should cook it for everyone. To try to take your hands on the block, you can. I did that. Okay. So I'm back to trying to challenge yeah. myself. I mean, I like. I'm just being grateful when I say I don't like bacon. I like some bacon. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes if I pull it up, then it won't stay. Like. Yeah. You know, it has yeah, but you don't want to pull from the the distal. You don't want to pull from the foot because that's just going to make no, your knee true. your knee's the victim. It does look good. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Well, you know, class is almost done. So, all right. So we'll come back to. You did one great one for that time. Was just doing that then yeah. over in class when we were you were doing something, just hands on the ground, just trying to pick mm -hmm. your heel up, yeah. and you really got oh, it. Oh, you liked that? that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. I like that, oh, I like that too. We can do that. What was that called? It's it's <laughs> kind of what I was. Heels on ground, pick your heels up, and you feel it here. Asana. <laughs> Um, it's shorten your leg, right? It's like short. Yeah. It's like suck the leg into the hip. Right, exactly. But it was like a great core one. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it felt is. Good. Well, tell you what, let's go back to our, you can face that way, that the scenery's better. We'll go back to our Prasarka part, it's an asana, and we'll work it. Remember, we did the forearm stand stuff, and that's what I was trying to get you to do without chewing it. Sometimes you want to sneak things in. Yeah, we're a little slow. No, no, it's, it's okay. Not slow at all, actually. So if you want to use the exhale, and you can use those motions now that you know. You know, you can dorsiflex, you can monkey toe, you can plantar flex. When I plantar flex, I use that um, foot, that side abdominal really strongly. Like I want to feel the lower side of my abdomen hug back to the front of my spine. I really want to feel it because then it helps me lift the leg out to the side without any strain in my back. I'll show you again. Exhale, huge hugging in the left, left side belly. Nothing in my back, nothing at all. Now, you might have to start with the fire hydrant leg. Hence why we did so much fire hydrant stuff. So you might, and your, your feet might be a little wide too. Yeah. yeah, that might limit you. So you might start with your feet closer. And we talked about the glutes too. So as you... As you're working this, you're working on abduction, taking the legs out to the side. See if you can use the, the glutes that are on the side of your butt. Yeah. The glute medius. Try not to use the hip flexors, aka the upper the upper leg, particular little ones by the upper leg. Yeah. And you can just do the different feet motions. So if you can play with the different feet motions on each side, you can do them simultaneously, or you can do left or right. Your choice.
So if you're feeling it where the leg bone meets the hip, you want to stop, drop, and rethink or ask what can I do to not feel it up in those higher hip flexors. You don't want to feel it up there. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah. So core first. You want to use the front of your body to lift. And you want to engage more of this muscle here, this glute medius, which is why the bending of the leg helps because it's like, oh, I feel it. And then when you straighten the leg, sometimes you don't feel it. I do now. But think about core first. Think about, remember, it's the same idea when we're doing this. It's just now your leg's going out to the side. So if you have to think about shortening your leg and then lifting, that might be your trick. So when you first do it, are like you bending into the side and then doing it and all? Or you you might that. have to. I'm not, that's not necessarily a bad thing to do. You're going to have to transfer more weight into your opposite side anyway. Right. That's, that's, unless you have wings on your ankles like Hermes, I think you'll be, you'll have to. Yeah. But I can't, if they're down here, I can't. Well, yeah, you can a little bit. But yeah, the height is a really smart thing. That will help for sure. You, you, need some, you need to chip away, right? You can't always. Yeah, a little bit. You cannot, yeah. Starting where I am now after years of this would, would have killed me too. <laughs> I've got a cramp in my little back. So the, the reason we're doing this is because we're leading up to um, an inversion. Okay. You can take a break if you want to. Um, getting braver. Yes. Yeah. Just like going upside down in the aerial six behind yeah. you. Yeah. Matt, it's okay. It's okay if you say no because I get a little persnickety oh, back. Who goes on my mat? All right. Groovy. It's groovy. All right. So. <laughs> so now. Dun, 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 dun. Against a uh, block, Christine. Would that be okay. more? No, wait. I got it. Come here. Yay. All right. I'm going to break this down a little bit more. Do we have time? So you might need the strap for your upper arms. So we'll do that in a second. So what I want to take you guys into is to forearm stand and take you from a puppy press. <clears throat> which you'll see in a second. So, <clears throat> you're going to go here, core, so that area we were trying to release in the very, 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 very first pose where our ribs were jutting out, we want to like totally take that in. See if you can go up. You can use this. Shouldn't fall on you, I've done this before. And then that might be it. You might have to move out too because your leg might be too long like you're going to have to be out. You could probably be where I am. You're going to do that and then you're going to do it on each side. I would do like three. I would just test it out, see how you feel. If it feels too grippy here, pause and don't do it. Or if it feels super grippy, you can get a little closer and have a little shin love. That might help. What were you doing originally? Putting your foot flat in foot. Your but not with a straight leg, but right? you saw that. Right, I'm going right, to give right. it a try. Okay. Well, my, my blocks are squishy. You definitely want to use the blocks, I think. The blocks would be like that, right? Yep, like a V. Um, and it's really easy to just focus on the legs here. So remember to press into your blocks. Yep. Yeah. You can have prayer position or you can interlace your fingers. But either way, make sure the hands are purposeful. They're actually doing your hands, Sandra. What are they going to do? No deal. Take, yeah, now either, yeah, press them together though. Press the palms together so you've got engagement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. Good. And what do you want this to do with So you want to fire hydrate yourself as much as you can, yeah. which means mm -hmm. you might, you are too close. You, no, 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 you're too close. Yeah, you'll never get your leg up there. Right there is good. Perfect. Yeah, and so, yeah. And I might just slide that one, right? It's just fine. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel a little burn in here, which is good. Okay, that's yeah, not that's good for that. Yeah, so remember, you're lifting through here before you lift the leg. So it's happening at the level of the spine before your leg lifts. It's not just throw my leg up and hope for the best. So if you have to do those tippy toe things that we did before, or we're doing a lot of this. Yeah. Remember how when we were here and I was telling you to use. The, the belly muscles to lift the heels. 
Yeah. Yeah. Try to walk up it or just no, 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 don't, okay. yeah, don't do that. Nope. Nobody here has the the joint flexibility, the, the ligament laxity for that. I should say. That, so that one goes up a little bit. And yeah. Press your press your hands and try. Like when they, when your hands aren't doing anything, you're not. If you, you're, if you're, Oh, I guess it does fall down. I guess that worked. That was for Christine. So good. So good. All right, go ahead. I'll hold it up if you're here. My hands are going to be. Yeah, so press your hands into one another so they're active. When your hands activate, you've got all these muscles, all the way up the arms and shoulders that activate. There you go. Fantastic. All right, so let me show you where I am ending this with Elka. And then you can. You can use these. So puppy press, essentially, I'm just going to use the floor. <laughs> I usually interlace my fingers for dolphin. Not the pinky, obviously, or else I would be in severe pain. So this is why I have your hands on blocks, because this requires a lot of hamstring openness, and it's easier when the floor is higher. Um, you're, so you want to, like, fire higher. Mm -hmm. And then it lifts you up eventually. Uh, yeah. I didn't have to kick or anything. Um, so you and that's gotta... where you're going, mm -hmm. ideally. But you're, you're probably not going to lift today if you don't right. normally practice it. So I didn't lift the first time. And you want to do both sides. So like if I do the other side, there's a reason for this. It's flexibility. To drink. This side. Let's go. It's easy. And then the whole time I'm here, by the way, I'm kind of stuck. Um, <laughs> the whole time I'm up here, I'm thinking of using the exhale. I'm drawing it in. I'm lifting the leg. It's a process. It's not just, mm -hmm. oh, I want to lift my foot up. Mm -hmm. You want to think about as close to your yeah. core as you can. So if you want a core, this is core. Yeah. It's, it's, all, yeah. yeah. it's also, you're able to get a bit too. Well, because I because I practice. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, and I I haven't put it. This was supposed to help because it gives you the height. Yeah, that and way you have it, but I don't have it. <laughs> it helps. It helps compensate for overstretching hamstrings or hamstring. So you want your feet as close to those blocks as possible, like, and that might be your work today is getting your yeah. feet. Yeah, as close to the box as possible. The other thing that I was going to suggest, I know you're kicking. <laughs> the other thing I was going to suggest is for you especially, this will actually, you, you, I think you'll think this is fun. So we take these away, and you try to see how close you can get without feeling, you don't want to feel the super ah up here, but get as close as you can, still feel like you can have some control, press down, and then you can just walk up. You don't have to do any more puppy stuff today. Just walk up. Remember when we were in forearm and I was like, you got to support your bridge from the bottom because both of you were like oh, that. Yeah. And then suddenly it's like, <sighs> so support your bridge, you know, from the bottom, which is the front of your spine and ribs. So you can give that a try. You might, you might like that better. Okay, so that would be facing this way. Yeah. And you can move the blocks in or out depending on your desire. So you got to get the leg up to the side. See your leg straight back behind you. The more your leg goes up to the side, so rotate it out. This is kind of fun. And then stretch, it's stretch the leg up. And not the leg up. When I say stretch the leg up, I mean then try to lengthen the leg from here. Okay. Similar to what we did. In yeah, because I end up with a weight on this leg going back. And try to take your time too, because I notice that you're you're like getting the leg up, and you're like, oh, I'm getting up, I'm getting up. So try. To, <laughs> I don't blame you. I like being upside down too. So. Good job, that you right. <laughs> so walk in and just see if this can take some time. Draw the knee into the chest. Open the leg out. And How high can you get that leg? I'll probably come down now. <laughs> I'm happy I'm up here. Yeah, you so like that. Probably come down Support down. your ridge when you're up there. Pelvic floor, ribs together. Yeah. That's all right. And remember your hands, like this isn't going to help you engage. Oh, I do that. That's all right. That's all right. 
just so you know. You're like, oh, this is hard. You know, because because you're making it harder, not because no, it's not good. Um, I felt I felt okay upside because it's good. It's getting to that. And so yeah, now just like stay this. there, Peter, and try to come up to your tippy toe, and then make this. Yeah, make that right thigh longer. You're almost there on that side. Okay, so now it's better this way. And if you get to the point where you're like, I have to kick up or else. But try not to. Try not to really resist. Do you like? Is that feeling okay? Yeah, so it's better when you hold like that. Yeah, and not only are you like this, but you're actually like yeah, pressing in. And then you should feel other muscles engaged when you do that. Ideally. That's probably not what I was doing over here. Yeah. But no, you got to be. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of like a wave. Yeah, it is. Very much. It is. In a good way. Yeah, your body oh, Your mm. body is supposed to move like a huh. wave. Cool. Is there anything you guys want to play with before we take it down? Hmm. Do you want to try a crow pose? Imagine how easy that would be now if you're going to today. Like, <laughs> You'd be flying up. Yeah. With, with the crow on the arms? Yep. Yeah. Um, did I have you on the blocks before? Did I have your feet on the blocks before? Because last time we worked it, you, you went up pretty easily. If I recall. I and it hadn't been, it had been a while. You don't have to. I'll, I'll do no pressure. I'll do whatever you say. No, no, don't. <laughs> That's not, that's I'm not what you want to say to a yoga teacher. <laughs> or anyone, really. Mm. Okay, cool. So you just jump right up on it. Let's see. So. Yeah. That's a good one. How do you do it? So, remember. So you can use the birdie perch and put your feet on the blocks. Oh. You can. You don't have to. So you can squat on the blocks. Oh, like over yeah. here. No, no, no. no. Like squat. Put your feet up. Yeah, or feet. Yeah. Feet yeah. And if you can be a part of it together, it's totally up to you, that's fine. And then you can take your hands down, and then this helps you lean forward. Oh, right, right. I do remember yeah. that. You know, it's been a while. But the, the further out your hands are, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. What I was going to say is the further your hands are, the more you have to lean. So take the hands in a little bit, and then squeeze your arms with your legs like a thigh master. Perfect. And then lift and hug your belly so your feet naturally lift. Good. All you have to do is lean forward. What you're doing is you're keeping your elbows back because it's scary. So that makes sense. You're keeping your elbows back here, but just let your elbows go forward over your wrists. And if you want, if you want a um, a support, put the bolster in front of you if you're afraid of falling on your head. That can that can be. Sometimes it's all you need is the mental um, assurance that there will be no head trauma today, which is fine. Hands are here. Now, if you wanted to, Peter, you could do that closer to the air mattress and then start to take one leg up on the air mattress, too. Oh, good idea. So where are your feet? Feet start on the block if you want this to be easier. Feet on the block. There's something going wrong. There's nothing wrong with you. Feet down. And, yeah, and then hands down. Squeeze your legs with your arms and then let your shoulders go forward. Look at your bolster, or else you're gonna put your head up. Well, <laughs> so the position, the position you're finding yourself in is that you're going forward, but then you're bending your elbows more, so that it right. never stack over your wrists. It's a fear mechanism. It's okay. What you want to do is you want to get the elbows to go over the wrists. You'll start to feel the weight transfer into the fingertips, and then this is where all this work that we do all the time comes in. So cool. We'll do it. Some other time. I wake up one morning and just say, do it. And I'll have somebody take a picture of it. It's usually the way it works. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we'll end restoratively. Yeah. My favorite way. Moxie's like, can I come in here? You guys are the floor. The spy pose. Yeah. I want to do that bird thing someday. I want to do that other thing. Little by little. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll do a nice side bend here. I'll show you. In the back. Um, you might want a blankie as your pillow. I'll show you the finished product. So top of the top of the hip bone, where you can feel that. 
You don't want that to really be on the bolster. You don't really want your arm to be on the bolster, but if you're short, you don't have a choice, so don't worry about it. Um, it's more that you want the hip to drop for most of us. And then here, so you start here. And then after about 10 breaths, you're going to count your own breathing. I'll remind you. You go here. And you go here, if you can, if the shoulder allows. And then you can go to straight. And that's all 10 breath increments. And you're just trying to get this side of your body to gently open. The idea is not to rush to the finished product if you can. And then, yeah, relax. And then, so uh, the blanket can be your pillow. It can, I don't know, not be your pillow. Got to take a potty break over here. I'll be back. Dogs, no. Oh. <laughs> Guys are taking a nice and slow. <clears throat> so if you yeah, if you want to go for straight legs, you can. You don't have to have both legs straight. That can be a little, a little bit too much work to balance. Who wants to work at this point? After an hour and fifty-two minutes of yoga, who wants to work? We're almost done here at Goose Cove. You guys can switch sides when you're ready to do so. Actually, what I would do in the middle is probably lay your back on the bolster and do like a sukhasana, like cross, crisscross Indian style, they used to call it, before they got all politically correct and stuff.
switch sides whenever you want. You can always come back to that Tsukai Mitsukasana afterwards. And we start with the legs tucked and then 10 breaths if you're doing it pretty in a pretty slow, even manner. It usually takes about um, two minutes ish. But it's okay if you don't hit an exact time. <laughs> Tonight's restorative oh, and time massage. About seven to midnight, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Seven to midnight. We're here to ideally be relaxed, not be on a schedule. You could do that with your legs, Sandy, if that feels good. There's nothing, there's no law prohibiting that, but the scissor position feels good. So you and try to cross your legs the other way if you remember even what you did the first time. And then I'll have you guys close with external rotation with pigeon with the pigeon but I'm gonna offer that you do um, something that's gonna target the mid spine more. So if you take the block in between the knees, totally optional, but I would recommend it because it keeps your legs separated and you pull the knees into the chest. Then there's one of two things you can do. You can have your feet in, take your legs to the left and then tuck your knees up like a little fetal position. That's what I usually do. If you're looking for more core work you can take your knees up go over and then take them down. But what the block does is it separates the legs in such a way that you've got a different position in your two sides of your pelvis and it will generally help stretch mid spine. So if you take your arms out, which I think you guys already have, and then like we did in the very, very beginning with those, um, those little twists and turns, you can turn your head to the right, which is typical here, but you can also turn your head to the left, right? And if you want to, you could um, move your right leg so it's longer and so the right knee stacks perfectly on top of the left. What that's going to do is take your right shoulder blade off the floor. I wouldn't stay like that, but then I'd go back. 
So essentially you are lengthening the right leg, taking the right knee, in your case closer to uh, the brick chimney over there, and then taking it back. So you might feel that the movement of this leg is pulling the hip forward, which in turn pulls muscles connected to your hip and rib and ribs and shoulder blades, etc. etc. You can just do that a few times and then. Yeah. Don't lift your head. Oh, this is okay. This is not. I mean, I mean unless you have to have it like that. Oh, mm -hmm. Just yeah. rub the leg. So, Peter, did you go to the other side? Or did you just start on that side? I just came to the side. Oh, okay. So, like this leg, only this leg gets. Don't do mm -hmm. Just this mm -hmm. goes that way. Oh, mm -hmm. not in that way. Yeah. So when you do this, see how that shoulder blade comes mm -hmm. off the floor and then comes down. Just to see how that feels. Yeah, that even hurts though. Yeah, I felt from there and everywhere. Great, great, great. So did you uh, did you get that? Mm -hmm. This. See this. I don't know if this can work or not, but. So this, your knee would go closer to gotcha. the heron and then back. So it's like, oof. So the whole pelvic half goes with it. And it pulls your shoulder blade off the floor. And you can switch legs when you're ready. Yeah. Did you feel like the last one? Right. Some, sometimes the muscles show you where they're holding up to tension. Mm -hmm. So I can do this passively, where I can just take this forward and back. See if it's here. Oh, sorry, I always feel this thing back here somewhere. Else. Yeah. I might have time for another ninety minute time massage someday. It's that same thing though, right? It's the same thing. So if this, I mean, if this aggravates it, don't do it. Well, but it doesn't aggravate it. Okay. It reminds me that it's there. And it's, I think it's good. Okay. It's good. Oh, it's good. Pose is Shavasana, and I'm not really rushing you, just, you know, food is sitting on the table. Oh, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> if you, you're, you're welcome to, if there's something else you need to do, but, like, don't do anything too, too crazy. So, like, maybe a supported bridge or um, something that's, that feels good but doesn't require a ton of effort or thought. And then essentially, <sighs> this is great. you can use the bolster if you want, and I'll, I will leave you here um, just to check, make sure that food and everything, I'll come in and get you when you're, I'm going to give you seven minutes. What time is it? It's 11.30 something. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do what you need to do. I'm going to give you seven minutes. I'm going to make sure food and everything's all set up.